close to one million. It has become a major social issue. The story of their life on the street is not a pretty one, but it's one our society must cope with. This film is a warning to teenagers and to you parents, because you don't want to find your kid here. Strip show, mister. You got to do a little bit more than watch. Yeah, well, I thought we'd, uh, I hate to rush into things. I thought we'd talk a little. Hey, you want to talk? Go pay a shrink 50 bucks. With me, you get body language for 20. That's what we dealt. Can I ask you a question? How old are you? How old do you want me to be? I like young girls. Well, ain't this your lucky day, because I'm 12 years old. Come on, tell me the truth. I mean, this means a lot to me. I'll be 16 pretty soon. Yeah? Yeah. Is that worth a couple extra bucks to you? Yeah. Well, I'm into cash and carry, so how about the money so we can get started? <laughs> Uh, 25? I mean, me being less than 16 and all? Are you telling me the truth? I swear to God. 25, right? All right. 25. Five 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 four one eight one. Hey, uh, how about you let me do my thing so I can get back out on the streets? I mean, that can wait till we're finished, can it? We are finished. Yeah, this is Finch. I'm at the downtown. Hey. You pig freak! Watch it! Hey, he propositioned me! You can't take me in on prostitution. It was entrapment. You don't be a booked as a hooker. You're going as an unsupervised minor. What? Well, you're a runaway. Let's take it a juvie. Hey, wait a minute. What are you trying to pull? I'm 19. And ain't going to no juvenile detention hall. She looks 19 to me. Baby fat. I lied because I thought you got your kicks from young chicks and lousy pigs. Juvie. No, come on. You coming? I got my car parked down there. I'm gonna go check out the west side. He's crazy. I'm 19. He didn't put the arm on me until he got what he paid for. He didn't turn me in until he got what he paid for, you lousy pig. Now that ain't legal. I'm 19. I got fired. Will you 
from? My mother spelled it. Very funny. You on drugs or anything? No, man, I'm not into that. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're above it, we know. <laughs> you go to hell. Look, let me tell you something. If you're 19, well, then prove it. And we'll lock you up with the grown-ups. Your pimp will come and bail you out, and you'll be out in the street in 24 hours. But if you're under 16, we'll process you out of here into the juvenile detention hall. Until we find out one way or another, this is where you live. It takes an hour, a day, or a month. Recognize this one, Lyle? Finch found her on the strip. She took him to a motel, sat on the money. She claims she's 19. I don't claim nothing. I am 19. You got no right to keep me here. I'm a human being, and I got rights. But that don't change what I just told you. You're going to be furniture around here until we get proof of your age. Maybe you can convince her. Now, what's he, the rubber hose man or something? Oh, I get it. He plays the good cop next to your Nixon, right? No. He doesn't play a cop good or bad. He isn't a cop at all. In fact, he comes out of your line of work. Tell her about it, Stick. What's this Stick business? It's just a name they used to call me. Yeah, I heard all about you on the strip. You were a pimp. Then you turned to his side. There's no use putting me down, lady. I'm just here to help you. Yeah, well, then get me out of here, because I'm 19. Make him believe that. We'll deal you and me, huh? All right? First, let's get something straight. We all know you're underage. So we want your name, your real name, and a phone number of your mother and your father so we can verify your age. Or? Or you tell Detective Garfield here the name of your pimp and a promise to testify against him in court and we'll wipe the slate clean. No way. I'd rather turn on myself than on my man. Fair enough. We dealt, lady, your move. You give us your name, and the phone number of your mother and your father. He ran away when I was a baby. She's a long distance call. We'll spring for him. Dial one first, then the area code. Broadway. I'm Lyle York with the Juvenile Authorities in Los Angeles, attached with the Social Service Bureau. Get to it. What do you want? How old is your daughter, Mrs. Broadway? Fifteen and a half, something like that. When's the last time you saw your daughter, Mrs. Broadwick? Is that what you called me up to find out? Mrs. Broadwick, your daughter was picked up tonight for prostitution. That's how she's been making a living. <laughs> I kind of figured she was doing something like that. If I asked you if you'd be willing to come down and pick up your daughter, what would you say? I'd say forget it. Oh, uh, one more thing. Don't call me up no more, okay? I don't need no more news bulletins on that kid. She's got her life. I got mine. She's 15 and a half, something like that. I know where you're coming from, kid. You got the kind of home you ought to run away from. We'll talk, huh? I'm sorry, kid. Yeah, sure. The whole world's sorry. Like anyone really gives a damn. Got people around? He's busy. Got another one here for him. This one's 14 and a half. Hey, 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 hey. Why the cuffs, Finch? Because she's crazy, that's why the cuffs. She fought me like a nut. You talk about born losers. Of all the cars on the street, she picks the cops to rip off. And when I call her, she scratches and she fights. Like I was doing her dirt. I wasn't going to steal your car. Yeah, sure, kid. Patsy, right, so let me have a tissue, though, will you? What were you doing then? Sleeping. That's all I was doing. I was cold. I just wanted a place to crawl into. 
You expect us to believe that, kid? Finch. Did you find her in the front seat or the back seat? Hmm? Hey. She broke into my vehicle. That's a felony. What difference does it make where I found her? She said she was cold. She was sleeping. Ask yourself if it makes a difference if you find her in the front seat or the back seat. Well, you love to twist things around, don't you? Well, it makes no difference. I got her for breaking and entering. Sure you do. And also resisting arrest like these scratches can prove. Ain't poor hell. Don't make fun of me, pimp. You know, you and me don't get along all that well, do we, Finch? You asking me or telling me? I'm asking you a favor. What's a favor? Leave your car door open for the next cold, tired kid so she can find a place to sleep without committing a felony. You know what you are? Yeah, I know. Now, why don't you give her a break, huh? Who knows? Maybe next time she'll return the favor. sleeping. I wasn't going to steal his car. My name's Lyle. Hi. I'm Haley Atkins. Atkins? Haley Atkins? All right, let's go. You two, Broderick, move it. Now you go to the dorms after showers and inspections. Warning, we look everywhere for contraband. Mm. Everywhere. So if you got any, give it up the easy way. <coughs> All right, into the shower. Broadwick! I warned you about that. Now get in the shower and hurry up, the barrier! What happened? Oh, she found my pills. Maybe they, they want you to see a doctor or something if you're not well. <laughs> get off it. I'm not sick, you dummy. Birth control pills. If I get back out on the streets before my new cycle happens, I've had it. Oh. Hey, flat backing ain't the worst thing in the world that can happen to you. I didn't say it was. Yeah, but you were thinking it. Hey, give me the soap. The soap. Hurry up, girls. When you're through, drop the towels in the hamper. You ever been in a JDH this size? No. You don't know too much anything, do you? Not much. You give them your uh, name, number back home, stuff like that? They called my parents. Your people care about you. What happens to you? They want you back? I think so. Yeah, you're lucky. They'll probably get you out of here by morning. Won't be long now, Mr. Atkins. I know. It's just that these last couple of days have been pretty rough. Not knowing where she was, what was happening. I guess I am a bit edgy. Is this the first time that Haley's run away? No. No. Happened once before. But she was just 11. Only went to my sister's house. She uh, packed a suitcase with a book and 
pair of slippers. Nothing serious. Just, just kid stuff. What made it serious this time? we see of her. Well, it depends on why she ran. Huh? Where were you? We were worried about you. Why didn't you call us? Okay, you two, not here. Let's get in the house. You hungry? You want something to eat? Um, no, we stopped along the way. Oh. Well, I waited supper. I thought maybe we'd eat together. Well, we saved an awful lot of room for dessert. Didn't we, baby? Hey, do you know what I have in the freezer? Two gallons. Oh, marshmallow rubber with a rock. You have a chaser. You're right. <laughs> Maybe we ought to talk, huh? I'm really glad you're home. And if you ran away because of me, because of the trouble we were having... Come on, it's ice cream time. We can talk later. Frank, stop babying her. She's not a baby anymore. She just ran away from home. That's a little more serious than dirtying your diapers. Haley, I just want to get everything straight between us so we can live together. So you don't feel like you have to run away from home and I don't feel like I... Well... Anyway... Was it me? You were picking on me... all the time. We just seemed to get on each other's nerves no matter what we were doing or... talking about. Everything I did was wrong. All the time I was wrong. I, I just didn't want to hassle it anymore. If I was picking on you, I'm sorry. Honey, I'm your mother. It's my job to correct you if you're doing something wrong. It's... It's all been said. Now that we've discussed the problem, everything's going to be fine. Your mother won't pick on you anymore. And you won't run away from home anymore. Right? Marshmallow Ripple with a Rocky Road Chaser. Oh, come on, Dad, I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. The mountains. Why not? Haley loves skiing. It'll be great for all three of us. I hate skiing. I don't like the mountain. And I get lonely when you and Haley go off and leave me all day long. We're on the slopes. You can be uh, shopping, uh, taking in all the sights. Marilyn, you're going to love it, I promise you. No, I won't. You will. Haley will. But I won't. Frank, kiss me. Oh, and another thing. No hotel. 
This time we're going to rent a cabin. Nobody but the three of us. We'll make it a family thing. Haley will love it. She'll thrive on it. Frank, kiss me again. And this time, think about me. Not Haley. Just me. What's the matter with you? Nothing. 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 You feel more for her than you do for me. You always have. Stop talking like that. I feel differently for her. But not more. How can you make comparisons? Why do you make comparisons? Marilyn, she's our own child, our, our flesh and blood. Oh my God, you make it sound as if she's another woman in my life. That's exactly what she is, Frank. That's exactly what Haley is, another woman, your woman. I, my own daughter is taking my husband away from me, and I don't know how to stop her. You're being ridiculous. Now, I don't know what the heck you're talking about. You do. You know very well what I'm talking about. I can't live like this. I can't spend every day of my life waking up hating my daughter because she's stealing my husband from me. Marilyn, stop it! Now shut up! I don't want to hear another word about this. Do you understand? Not one more word. I'll divorce now you. Now or ever again. I swear I will by everything that's holy. I'll divorce you and I'll get custody. You won't have Haley, Frank. I love her. But I love you more. All I ever wanted was you. I don't know, maybe, maybe things would have been different if we had another child. That's enough! I'm gonna catch a ride with Arthur. Leave the car with you. You drive her to school. She's late. I'll drive you to school. I do love you, Haley. I do love you.
you get into fighting between yourselves over her? Carly. No need, baby. This one's mine. I get the next bus. The girl is yours. Quarter's mine. and a milkshake. Dollar fifty-five plus tax. I'll have some toast and coffee. Two cheeseburgers with everything. And uh, two thick chocolate milkshakes. You like chocolate, don't you? You meeting anybody? Now you get off the bus. You look like you needed a friend. My name is Comfort. <laughs> people who love me gave me that name. You got people? Friends in town you stand with? No. I tell you what, my appetites run more to a big, fat, juicy steak. Only thing is, I, uh, I like eating with a friend. Friend. What do you say we forget about them cheeseburgers and go fill ourselves up with some meaningful food? Oh, come on. What do you say? What's to lose? Boxy clothes, wearing golden earrings, driving around in a fancy machine. <laughs> hey, you remember four days ago, you stepped out of that bus, right, friendless. Now you're not alone. Comfort loves you. Oh, comfort takes care of the ones he loves. Oh, yes, indeed. Each and every foxy lady. Look at it out there, Haley. They're family, though. The only family this poor loving man has ever had. Yeah, I thought you said you didn't know anybody in this town, baby. He was in Juba when they picked me up. I told you about that. Right. Yeah, that's one bad dude. When I say bad, it ain't out of love. You keep away from him. Can't do you any good at all. He seemed all right to me. Yeah, well, he rubs most people the wrong way. Just like he rubs us people out in the streets the wrong way. That man ain't fish. He ain't fowl. He's snake. He was king on the strip two years ago. <laughs> he ran as many ladies as he could handle. He was loved. You dig where I'm coming from? He was loved by everything that walked. And one day he turned me. Turned. <laughs> ah, but we leave him behind, huh? And look at that beauty standing right out there. You 
do have an eye comfort. <laughs> Haley, I'd like you to meet my number one first lady, Maureen. You and her got to be real good friends. When are you going to turn her out? All in good time. Right, Haley? to the work for comfort because he needs you. Uh, you said I meant something to you. You do, Mama. A lot. But you want me to uh, sleep with other men for money? It'll show me how much I mean to you if you do that for me. It's important to me to know how much I mean to you. It's important to us. I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Not even for me? I can't. You 
choose it, Haley. Now? What pain? You can have it either way. She wants his gold and silver. All she wants is a nice young man. Maybe three years ago. Just three years ago I was doing that. Forget it. Looking back is like looking into the grave. Not really. Really? Hey, come off it. If everything was Disneyland when you were a kid, then ask yourself what you're doing here now. Hell, I started about your age. Except I wasn't as lucky as you. The one who turned me out wasn't half the beautiful person Comfort is. He used to beat me just for kicks. When Comfort comes after me, I know I've done something to deserve it. He hits me because he loves me. And I love him for it because it's my interest he has at heart. You'll wish your father treated you as good as Comfort will. I don't think I can do it, Maureen. <laughs> sure you can. Hey, flat backing is what you do for a living the same as a bus driver does what he does. You finish your job, you come into comfort. By law and war. And if you're lucky, everything goes good for you. One day you'll make it to where I'm at. I'm comfort's number one lady, Haley. Do you know what that means? Do you know how I'm treated when I walk into a room or when I step out with my man? If I'm somebody, I'm the number one lady. Hey, three rules of the streets. No dope, no rip-offs, no BB. And the cardinal rule that you live by is that you never hold back on comfort, not even a couple of bucks. Hey, he takes care of us. No, he deserves every penny we take in. Everything, understood? Good. Hey, and now the good news. Comfort knows how you might feel a little strange about all this, so he's not gonna turn you out today. Tomorrow is soon enough. Hey, didn't I tell you he's some kind of a beautiful person? Angie's anniversary tomorrow. It's gonna be a year since she died. She was only 15 when she came to the city looking for me. For some excitement, some quick money. Well, back in those days, you were visible enough, so she didn't have to look too hard to find you. Yeah. She wanted me to be the one to turn her out. I hit a man almost killed her. Oh, it's been a year ago since your pimping days. Now, I'll bury you. Bury you. You wait for our side. <laughs> our side doesn't pay worth the poop. It's a good clean living that makes it all worthwhile. Hey, bus. Huh? Turn it around. Damn it, turn this car around. Hang on. it easier first time out. You'll do just fine. Hey, what are you doing here? <laughs> oh, I told you anybody could do anything if the situation's right. How, um, how did you get out of juvie? <laughs> they stuck me in this foster home. I lasted about two days and split. Look, how about postponing the reunion till later, eh, girls? Come on. Listen, you're gonna be all right. Just don't fight it. I'll talk to you later, okay? You're gonna be just fine. This is a safe place. It's only been in operation a year, and the walls are thin, so if you have any trouble with your trick, a scream will bring somebody to you. You don't have to worry this time out. I'll be staying in the room with you. The whole time? From beginning to end. And like I said, Comfort took special pains for your first time out. Don't disappoint him. Hey, 
Now, don't get all upset. I know what I'm doing. Hey, look, that's why Comfort always lets me handle the new ones. Right, Marie? Right. Hey, relax, Haley. Let yourself go. Listen up a little, what do you say? This sure is a real live one, Maureen. Well, maybe you can uh, light up the fires a little. late girls to drink up fast. I don't want to put the rush on you, but it's been a long night. Yeah, for her too, Maggie. It was a coming out night. Oh, well, say, if I'd known that, I'd put a little booze in the coffee. You look like you had a tough time. Oh, I don't know. The business is going to hell. In my time, you'd never see a girl under 20 on the street. Now everybody wants babies. How old are you, kid? As old as you after tonight, okay? I guess maybe you are. Hey, don't let her get to you. I hear she was a pretty good hooker in her day. I mean, she saved up enough to put this place together. Maureen just sat there through the whole thing. Stop thinking about it. It's behind you now. Look, pretty soon you're not even going to know when they're pawing you. I mean, your body will be there, but your mind's going to be far away. No way. Hey, this ain't forever, you know. I mean, I ain't going to be no little lady of the night for the rest of my life. I got dreams just like anybody else. One day, I'm going to get married. He may be one of my Johns. No. Don't you laugh. You know what they say, we make the best wives, know how to keep them happy, right? We may even have kids, you know. Whew, I'd love to have some kids. I take care of them, let them know that they're loved, that they're wanted. Loving isn't everything, Karen. It's the kind of love that counts for what it does to people. Sometimes it doesn't bring them together. It, uh, it pulls them apart. It makes them run from it. If I have to run, I, I want something to run to that, that feels right. Something that makes me feel like a person. Comfort. Marine. That man, mm, no, this ain't it for me. Hey, you're crazy. 
Without any place to go, the cops are going to get you. And they'll send you home. Or they'll put you in some foster home where all they care about is the money they get from the state. Or worse, comfort will get you. And those pimps go crazy when a chick runs from the stables. Haley, please don't do it. You, you'll get used to it. You'll see you'll get used to it all. Oh, you don't even know when you're well off. Yeah, but I know when I'm not. You take care. Yeah, you too. Mm -hmm. uh, you ever need anything? How many runaways would you estimate there are in this country, Officer Garfield? The latest statistics I got was between 600,000 and a million. I had no idea there were that many. How many would you say are in this city alone? Well, roughly around uh, 120,000. If we're lucky, we pick up maybe 1% of them. And what happens to the other 118,000 who slip through that tight net? Almost anything, Senator. Some of them uh, leave the city, others come in. They go underground, live the way they have to, steal, mug, get picked up by pimps for prostitution. Uh, perhaps we can stay with the pimps for a few minutes, uh, Detective Garfield. Uh, we have an expert witness uh, who's going to testify in that area. Mr. York, uh, who's a white man. Was that unusual? Not really, Senator. Although I never asked him, I think both Lyle's parents were white. I think you understood my question, Mr. Garfield. I meant no disrespect. Getting back to the issue at hand, if you have anything to add to the testimony you have already given to this state investigation before you are dismissed, Officer Garfield, we would be pleased to hear it. Well, I guess what I'd really like to say is that these kids aren't your Mark Twain-type characters. They're not your uh, Tom Sawyers or your Becky Thatchers who run off to join a circus or see the world with their clothes wrapped in a bandana at the end of a pole and slung over their shoulders. So they could be, if anybody showed them they cared a damn. And sure, you've got your bad ones, you know, the real rotten ones. And there's no way of making a decent human being out of them, no matter what you do. But when I see them, I ask myself if they were born that way. I guess what I'd really like to say is that I'm a little fed up with these kinds of hearings. The time and money being laid out across the country for these investigations could be put to better use. Like uh, halfway houses, teachers, counselors. Out there on the street are 10 year old junkies robbing and killing for a fix. There are 14 and 15 year old girls and boys selling their bodies for a place to sleep. Now those are the facts, gentlemen. Don't, you don't need any investigations to find them out. Just look around you. Open your eyes. Then go home to your well-cared-for kids and think about it. I guess that's all I have to say. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you, Officer Garfield. I think I speak for all my colleagues when I say you've made a cogent point. Uh, Mr. Lyle York, please. You understand this is just a hearing, Mr. York. There are no oaths taken, no lawyers present. And although we do keep a transcript for our records, it's all very informal. I understand. Detective Garfield, explain why uh, blacks are drawn into the uh, sporting life. Uh, can you give us any indications why uh, you became a pimp? Well, it may have escaped your attention, Senator. But uh, all white men are not born into money. It's not the color of a man's skin that sends him out on the street. It's not black or white. It's green. I would like to call our attention once again to the more basic problem itself. The kids out there. Now, from the point of view of the teenage prostitute on our streets today, what are the issues, Mr. York? Nobody cares about it but a pimp, as long as she's bringing in the money. That's the only point of view. Mr. York, 
Surely they don't believe that. Surely they do, Senator. Let me stay with her point of view for just a second. The pimp feeds her, clothes her, gives her a place to sleep, loves her when she's good, beats her when she's bad. He's got a drawer full of phony ID cards for her. Offers her free legal service. Hospitalization insurance if she gets sick. What do you do for her? We offer her the same things, as well as protection. Protection. Well, Senator, perhaps I can best illustrate that point by telling you a story about a girl named Angela. About a year ago, uh, Angela was picked up off the streets by Officer Garfield. It's a teenage prostitute. He thought she was 15, wanted to hold her as a juvenile. Her lawyer, paid for by the pimp, claimed she was 20. He even produced two prior convictions for prostitution as an adult. Officer Garfield had no way to hold her. So she was bailed out that night. Went right back to work on the streets. 24 hours later, she was found murdered. Strangled with her own pantyhose by a client. That's when I came into the picture. That's when I first met Officer Garfield. You see, I had to identify the body. Angela was my sister. She was not yet 15. Well, uh, no matter how heartbreaking the story is, I, uh, it certainly could not be called typical. Typical. All right, let's talk about the typical. Uh, Two-thirds of all those kids that are in juvie there right now are there for only one reason. They're runaways. That's the only crime they committed. For that, you want to put them behind the bars, strip them of their constitutional rights by, by handing out indeterminate sentences. Now, most of these kids know what's in store for them when they, leave, when, they, when they leave their homes and go to the street. That doesn't stop them. You see, they're running away from homes where they got a feeling that they can't survive anymore. And they got no one to run to and no place to go. Forget about Angela. Call her Susan or Ann or Mary or Haley. Senators, it is a criminal offense to be a runaway. Now, these fugitives are hunted by the law, and they are hunted by the pimps who are always looking to have their stables. The law wants to send them back to the misery of the homes that they, that they left. The pimps want them flat on their backs. Now, what chance does she got? She needs money, but she can't work. She's underage. What legitimate employer is going to dare want to hire her? She's a fugitive. But she's got to eat. She's got to have a place to live. So what's left to her? If she doesn't want to work on the street, she's got to steal. Well, sure, you got your free clinics. You got your halfway houses that are filled to the brim with no more vacancy signs. There are enlightened people who are doing everything they can, but it's not enough. Now, what's the answer that these people and places give? We got no more room. We got no money. So they tell the kid, go back home. Go back to what drove you onto the street in the first place. So they do what they gotta do. What we forced them to do because they got no other way to go. We've been in touch with every police department in the area. Even our central runaway department at the state capitol. Uh, Frank, could you do something about that music doll and the beats really beginning to get to me? Do you suppose the reason Ellen isn't here tonight is something to do with the recipe for these hors d'oeuvres that you gave me? <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. Hello? This is the long distance operator. I have a collect call from the Haley Atkins for Mr. Frank Atkins. Will you accept the charges? Yes, operator. I'll, I'll accept the charges. Hello, Haley? Haley, are you there? Yes, Mama. Well, how are you, Haley? How are you? I want to come home. Is anything wrong? Are, are you sick? Are you hurt? No. I just want to come back home to both of you. 
Anything important? The police? No, it's it's Ellen. She's still apologizing for not being able to come tonight. Arthur had to work late. Mama, are you there? Um, there's a fresh tray of those on the top shelf in the refrigerator. Mama, are you there? I'm here. Can I come, Mama? Can I come home? Well, uh, Haley, I think we better leave things the way they are for now. Uh, you've been on your own and obviously taking very good care of yourself. I need you. I need to go home now. Haley, listen to me a minute, please. I love you. But you're stronger than I am. You've got your whole life ahead of you. You can do anything you want to with it. I've only got your father. And I can't lose him. I'm afraid, Haley. I'm afraid. Everything has been so wonderful between us since you've been gone. You're crazy is what you are. So what are you going to do now? You got any suggestions? Ah, you can crash here for a while. But I can't keep you on the bum very long. There's four of us living in this dump, and we all work out at the same stable. Everything we get goes to our pimp. You'll have to earn. You mean comfort? Well, I guess. Our man ain't gonna war with comfort, especially over a chick who ran out. Hey, it could be worse. He isn't gonna hurt you too much. You got no choice. I mean, it's comfort or the cops. He'll beat on you, but you'll heal. From then on, you can live. I'm not going back to comfort. I'm not going to work for any pimp. I'm not going to live that way. Hey, there's nothing else, Haley. Yeah, there is. Thanks for the food. Thanks for the clothes. Hey, where are you going? What are you going to do? You really think I'm crazy if I tell you? <laughs> Try me. Okay. You said it yourself. It's either comfort or the cops. And it's not comfort. Hey, Haley, what are you going to go to the cops for? What do you think they're going to do for you? I don't know. But it's the only thing left for me to try, Karen. I've got to try. I'll let you know how it goes. I'll keep in touch. You take care of yourself. Don't let him take your birth control pills away from you either. Wait a minute. Take the coat. That one's still wet. sometimes, especially when it's all bottled up inside and can't find its way out. It's hard to hate somebody you brought into this world. I wish they never did. Uh, just 
Can I see you for a second? Hey, just be a minute. Everything's gonna be okay. There's no more room for her to either one of those halfway houses. Not one stinking bed. Well, I told you that. Now, come on, Lyle, loosen up. Those places are doing the best they can. They even got some of those kids sleeping two in a bed. I told her to come to me, Garfield. I told her I was gonna help her. There she is right now. And what do we do? We slap her in the face. What makes us any different from the rest of the world? Nothing. We are part of the rest of the world. And you better live with that because that kid in there has got to. There's only one thing left. Stop it. Hell no. Well, for a while. Or for a week. A month, maybe, until we can get into one of those foster hey. homes. Or maybe one of those halfway hey, houses hey, might hey. open up. Huh? Let me take her home with me. Oh. Until we come up with something no else. No way. No way. Now, you're asking me to put a young runaway into the home of an ex-pimp? You know how that'll go down? We'll both end up on our butts. I can't even take it without a court ruling. What do you expect me to do? Don't tell her. There's no more room at those halfway houses I was telling you about. What happens? Where do I go? There's a place called Stafford. It's a detention facility for juveniles. Is it like a jail? Not really. A lot of runaways are sent there. Just give us a chance, huh? I don't want to go there. Look, it won't be long. And I'll, I'll find someplace better and I'll get you out of it, I swear it. Oh, I'm sorry I came here, boy. Sorry I came to you. Haley, smile. Hmm? It's not all that bad. Look. You don't see any of the other kids out there climbing the fence to get out of here, do you? Hey, smile at the world. You trust me. It's not going to be tough here at all. Hello, girls. Lucy? How's that sewing project of yours coming? It's fine, Miss Colby. Just fine. Good. Haley, are you all right here? Yeah, fine. Good. I'm glad because I, I feel that it's important to feel comfortable in a new home. You know, all my girls do very well at Stafford. Really, very well indeed. It's a sort of give and take situation here. Lucy, did you tell Haley about our little picture taking sessions here? I did. I told her all about it, Miss Colby. I even told her what would happen if she tries to give anybody a tough time. I told her, I swear. Right, Haley? Yeah. She told me. Good. Men like those kind of pictures. They pay well for them. I'm really very anxious to start work with you.
still on a rock. Let me see. No, I, I think I broke my ankle. If you did, I'll knock. <laughs> More than anything, Comfort is a sensitive man. And you cost him his dignity. No girl has ever run away from him to go to the cops. That hurt him. I didn't mean to. Why'd you come back? I need him. I need a place to live. I need to work. And love, baby. You need his love. There's no one who'll take care of you like Comfort will. Even your own father doesn't love you and care for you like Comfort does. Think about it. It's true, isn't it? Yes. And you took everything from him and gave nothing in return. Now you want to come back to him. You think you've got that right? What do I have to do to set it straight with him? Treat him with the same love and respect that he treats you with. You heard his good name with his people. I'm sorry. Well, that's not enough. What you hurt, you have to heal. Agree? Comfort wants you to have this. Even after what you have done to him, he wants you back. Because he loves you. Wear white tonight, Haley. Comfort likes white. Be at his place at midnight. Be there. Now, get yourself something to eat. And be happy you came home, baby. And the street is crawling with kids. I don't even remember what my own kids look like. Just give me another half hour, will you, Russ? Well, maybe she went someplace else, some other town. This town sure didn't work out too well for her. Now, she's around here somewhere. Well, how can you be sure? If there's one town she's got no reason to come back to, it's got to be this one. Well, she's got the reason. Her man, he'll take care of her. Yeah, but she ran out on him. She came straight to us last time. Yeah, what do I do with her? I send her off to Stafford. Now, I sent her off to Stafford. Something pretty rotten must have happened to her if she had to fight her way out of there. That's terrific. I wonder if she's ever going to trust us again, huh? Hey, it's me, 
thing who loves you, Haley girl. Comfort gives out all the loving. It's your sisters who handle the pain department. Thank you, ladies. Good night. Well, in my time, they used to call us pros. Now they call them hookers. The word pro had some class to it. Professionals. And we were. Not snotty-nosed kids like today. 14, 15-year-old baby meat pushing out the better women. Hey. I heard of a nine-year-old boy selling it. Guess what? Yeah, I know, man. They're buying it. Yeah. Boy, the damn world's changing for the worse. How about another beer? Yeah, I'll get it. <clears throat> I'd love to get rid of these kids. I don't like them hanging around my place, but then if they did that, I'd lose 70% of my business. You didn't run any kids when you were on the street, Lyle. You were all right. Coming from you, Maggie, I take this as a compliment. It was meant. Oh. I'm looking for this one. Oh, yeah, she's been in here just yesterday with Maureen, Comfort's first lady. You remember Comfort. He wasn't much when you were a player. Yeah, I remember him. Oh. She and the one you're looking for are pretty tight. Her name's Karen. Yeah, I know her. Excuse me. Hey, how you doing? Hey, I turned 16 two weeks ago. You can't take me in. There's no juvie. And I ain't working on a strip right now. I told you I'm no cop. I just need to lay out. I'd buy a cup of coffee and talk with you. Yeah. Yeah. told me all about Stafford. He sent it to a lousy place, man. Yeah. Where is she? I want to see her. Hey, look, the name that she uses when she talks about me is friend. I'd like to keep it that way. I'm a friend, too. Mm-hmm. Not to hear her tell it. Is she that happy with the life she couldn't use another friend? A little help? All I want to do is talk to her. Now, what harm is that going to do? Is that what you want to do? I mean, really do. Help. Yeah. All right. She's at Kermit's Castle. It's a little middle-of-the-line hotel down on the Strip. She was supposed to meet a John there about 15 minutes ago. Hey, look. She's been beat. And she's feeling really low. Hey, uh... I did this for her. Not you. Now, she needs a friend. Not somebody like me, but maybe somebody like you who could really do her some good. If that's what he wants to do. Hey, you. A room she in. 
Never seen her before. You tell me where she is or I come across the desk. You a cop? I could be. If I don't get the answers I want. Now you're renting room to underage girls for prostitution. And I can get you put away for a lot longer than it's going to take you to tell me where she is. Look, I don't own this hotel. I just run it. Okay. Okay, she's been working here steady enough for three or four nights. What room? 312. Now, York, I'd like to talk to you for a minute. Go away. Get the hell off of my case. Haley, you open the door from the inside or I'm going to break it down. What do you want? Well, I'd like to talk to you for a minute. You here to help me again, like you did the last time? If you let me. Yeah, well, I've been there before, and there ain't no way to get there from here. I'm on his time. Hey, you. You got a home someplace to be? Well, uh, uh, what about the money I paid? What about it? Well, do you think I could have half of it back? I mean, I think that'd be fair. Later. for this room by the half hour. How much time is that going to buy me? What we got to talk about, just five minutes. That's fair enough. Haley. Hey, I, I don't know exactly what happened here to stop her. I know it couldn't have been good, and I'm sorry. You knew what kind of place that was when you sent me there. Yeah, well, I knew it wasn't the top of the world, but I, I, I didn't expect you were going to be in it that long. And I was working every way I could to get you out of there. Oh, well, Comfort's more honest than you. He calls himself a pimp. He puts down the word, and if you live by it, the world ain't going to turn on you. Well, not you. You turn a person inside out. Make them believe like there was maybe something to look forward to. And then you slap him down for no reason. I'm offering you help, not grief. And that's all that comfort can give you. But his grief hurts a lot less. Hey, Haley, listen to me. I, I'm sorry. Just give me a chance. Just, just trust me one more time, please. There's no more trust in the world. I'm going to let comfort do for me because there's no one else who can. I'm not asking you. I'm begging you. I don't want any more help. Not from you, not from anyone else. I don't want to go to any more of your jails or your institutions. Don't do anything else to me for my sake. Don't help me. Don't love me. Just leave me alone, for God's sake, just leave me alone, all of you.
Is that it? Here's an extra 20. You're gonna have to work at it a little bit harder. All right. Hey. You're gonna be my star. You're gonna make your man real proud of you. Now you get on out there and bring back what I need. Hey. Then you bring it on home to me. Comfort, what's the price? She's valuable. Talk money. Now, what makes you think she wants out, man? She's happy where she is. Now, you'll help me convince her that she's not. She loves me, man. I don't even think I could pry her loose. Thousand dollars gonna buy me some leverage, yes or no? Suppose it's no. Well, then I go down and speak to my friends in the department. Garfield wouldn't let you spit on an envelope to seal it. I'll make sure that your butt is run ragged. I'll hustle your chicks, man. I'll make you one unhappy player, Comfort. Take my word for it. <sighs> you said 2000 I said 1000 Talk reasonable, huh? It's even at ten bucks a trick. That chick is gonna make me better than three thousand a month. I can make each and every day of that month hell for you, man. If we got a deal. Buying mags at two. I'll have her there. We'll make the trade. I'll be there. A thousand dollars? I don't believe it. She doesn't want any part of you, and you're buying her like a quarter section of meat, and you're asking me to lend you four hundred dollars to do it. That's right. Oh. It's like a bad peanut. It leaves a rotten taste in my mouth. If it was up to me, and it is, come to think of it, I'd rather just go in there and bust him for pimping a minor. That way I, I do my job. You save $600, and I don't go off the limb for another four. Oh, that's wonderful the way you put that. You know, with that kind of clear thinking, Garfield, you could save the world. Oh, yeah? Well, show me where I'm wrong, Mr. Stick. Instruct me. All right, to pull her in off the street. You only put her on the inactive list until she becomes of age. Then once she's out from under your protective custody, she's right back out on the street again where she started alone. She needs somebody to believe in her, somebody who cares about her. That somebody is us or it's comfort. Whoever it is, her soul can be bought. And for $1,000, you can buy it. It shows her I care. Ah. It does something else. It's just as important. Maybe even you can understand this. It buys her permission. From who? To do what? From comfort to leave. She paid a heavy price when she came back. She paid a heavy price when she left them for a thousand bucks. I can buy her the right to come back with no trouble if things start going against her. It's her right then because she's done what comfort wanted. Because as far as she's concerned, comfort is the only home she's got. All right, all right. It's worth the 400 bucks just to get you off that soapbox. One more question. There are a lot of Haley's out there in the street. Why this one? Why go into hop for this particular one? Maybe because of all the ones out there, she was the one who came looking for help. I had her in my hands, Russ, and I lost her. Now, those reasons don't make any sense. What's the difference, huh? I'll see if I can scrounge up the money. Yeah, I've got a lot of outstanding debts around here. Oh, uh, Russ, uh, one more thing. You want me to sit down again? Yeah, you better. Listen, um, we got to find a place for her. A home, not Stafford. Oh, no, no, come off it, Lyle. If, if you're trying to put her into your custody... Oh, not mine, yours. 
Oh, now, wait a minute, Lyle. I'm not all alone in this world. I got a wife and a couple of kids. What better home for a judge to turn her over to, huh? We need a plan, Russ, something to offer her, some place for her to be welcome. Look, just until we can find the right place for her. I'll, I'll chip in a few bucks when I got it, you know that. Help her, huh? Help me. All right, let's go get the money. Here. Five, five fifty-six, six fifty-seven, seven fifty, eight. Eight fifty, nine, nine fifty. One thousand dollars. <laughs> hey, tell me the truth, man. You think about starting up your own stable again, huh? huh? Well, if you are, that show is some good stuff. Shut up. Money, let's go. I'm not going with you. I'm going to stay with comfort. All my ladies love me like that stick. What can I tell you? I paid for a comfort. You convince her. He paid for you, baby. Just stay out of this. Comfort, please. I want to stay with you. I, I'll work hard for you. I'll bring you more money than any of your other girls. Please. You know something, Stick? I got a lot of respect for the American way of life. Well, we got a long way to go. I admit that. But it's still the greatest country in the whole world. Near the land of the free and the home of the brave. Now I'm gonna convince this gorgeous American princess to do what's not in her heart. Comfort is you, baby. Comfort loves you. Let's go home. Lost some blood, but nothing serious. It would have been real trouble if you hadn't called the ambulance. He owes you. Will you keep him in the hospital? Wouldn't be a bad idea, but it seems he has other plans. He'll be out in a minute. So, uh, what happens to me now, huh? Nothing bad. He won't let that happen. Am I supposed to believe that? Haley. That guy in there put up $600 of his own money, every penny he had, plus borrowed 400 more, got knifed and could have died. Now, how much more does it take for you to believe in him? Trust him, Haley, for your own sake. All he wants to do is make it right for you.
Come on, get out of there. You're not allowed to drive. You're underage. You're in no shape to drive. Oh. Can you drive? Got any plans for me? Yeah, I found you a home. Where? West Garfield. It's good people. Got a good family. You, know. you like them. About your thousand dollars. Oh, forget it. No, no, I was just thinking. You paid a lot for me. I could uh, find a corner, maybe go to work for you. You gotta be kidding. Take it. If you ever need somebody, anytime, all it takes is a telephone call. Call me. Or if you think about it, call home. You might want to get in touch with him someday. Time meets up a lot of hurt.